In this video, we're going to learn how to find the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor, or the capacitance between two metal plates that are close to each other. And the setup for this is that the plates have an area, A, so they've got some length and some width to them. They've also got a separation between them, D. So I've got one metal plate up here, another one down here, and I want to find the capacitance between those two plates. And this turns out to be a really important problem because it turns out that most capacitors that you either buy at the store or have laying around your house are in fact parallel plate capacitors or can be treated like them. There's also a huge number of things in the physical world that can be treated like parallel plate capacitors. For example, cells. Uh, cells can actually be treated like parallel plate capacitors if you want to know how they behave electrically. And so the setup for this problem is that you've got two metal plates or two conducting plates that are separated by a distance D and they have a total area A. And importantly, this distance D is much smaller than the linear dimension of the capacitor, so the length or the width of that capacitor. And this allows us to treat something with finite area as if it were a set of infinite plates. So we can use all of our favorite, favorite formulas for infinite objects. So if we want to find the capacitance of these parallel plates, we need to know two things. So the capacitance is equal to the charge on one of the plates. So we can take this as our, our top plate if we like, divided by the voltage between the two plates. And just to be safe, you can take the absolute value of that because the capacitance is virtually always a positive quantity, unless you're doing some cutting edge research. And to find the capacitance, we first put a charge of Q on one of these plates. So let's say that the total charge on this top plate is plus Q, and I'm going to have an equal and opposite charge on the other plate of minus Q. So I already know one of the things in my capacitance equation. I already have the charge. The difficult part is finding what this delta V is, and that's going to be most of this problem. So I don't know the potential difference delta V between two plates, uh, but I do know what the electric field is between two plates. I know that it's equal to the charge density, sigma, divided by epsilon naught. And I went over this in a previous video. If you haven't seen that, you can check it out in the link below. And we can use the electric field to find delta V because we know that delta V is equal to the negative integral of E dotted with dr. And in our parallel plate example, the electric field is pointing from the top plate with positive charge to the bottom plate. So I'll just draw it in white here. And it's pointing straight down in this case. So straight from the plate with positive charge to the plate with negative charge. So if we call this the, say the Z direction is pointing down, then the electric field as a vector is sigma over epsilon naught times Z hat, the unit vector pointing in the Z direction. So all we need to do to figure out delta V is first we need to dot this with dr, and we know that dr, so this is what's called the differential line element, in Cartesian coordinates it's x hat times dx plus y hat times dy plus z hat times dz. But in this case, because we're taking the dot product with something that's only pointing in the z direction, we don't have to worry about the x and the y pieces of dr. And so if we take e and we dot it with dr, we'll get that it's just equal to sigma over epsilon naught times dz. So now we need to integrate this, but how exactly do we do that? Well, let's look at this from the side. So we've got some positive charge on the top plate and some negative charge on the bottom plate. And we want to find the potential difference between these two plates. So delta V between the top and the bottom. We know the distance between them is D. And I could call this top point, let's call this zero, because that seems like a natural choice for 
our zero point. And in that case, the bottom point is D. So when I carry out my integral of the electric field, which is pointing down, this is my electric field, I'm integrating from zero to D of E dot DR, which we just said was E times DZ. And remember that the electric field between two parallel plates we just said above is sigma over epsilon naught. So we've got sigma over epsilon naught times dz. But these are both constants, sigma and epsilon naught. So we can pull them out of the integral. And we're left integrating from zero to d of dz. And this is my absolute favorite kind of integral because this is just d. We're integrating all the little elements of length dz from 0 to d, and the total sum of all of those is just d. So our difference in voltage between the two plates is sigma over epsilon naught times d. Now we should be careful about signs here. Um, fortunately, when calculating capacitance, you don't need to worry too much about signs, but there is a negative sign out front of all this. So because we only care about the magnitude of delta V, we don't need to worry about that minus sign. Now the only thing left is, remember, our original expression for the capacitance is in terms of the charge Q, but we have the charge density sigma, and so we just need to make a substitution, and that's that sigma is equal to our charge per unit area. That's just what charge density is. And so if we make that substitution, we'll get that delta V is just Q times the separation D divided by epsilon naught times A. And now we're finally ready to plug it into our capacitance equation, which is that the capacitance is equal to the charge Q divided by the voltage delta V, taking the magnitude of all that. And recall that this is the charge on one of the plates. So if we plug in our value for delta V, so we've got Q on the top, and we've got a Q times D divided by epsilon naught times A. The Qs cancel, which is wonderful. That's what we want because the capacitance shouldn't depend on the amount of charge that we put on. And we're left with epsilon naught times A divided by D. And this may be one of the most famous formulas in electrical engineering and physics. And it's certainly one of the most useful. This is the capacitance for a parallel plate capacitor of area A and separation D. Finally, I'd like to thank all my patrons on Patreon. Your support is greatly appreciated, and it is you who makes these videos possible. If you aren't currently a patron, to get early video access, behind-the-scenes footage, exclusive content, and join a like-minded community, click the link on screen or in the description below. Thanks for watching.